Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again today. I'm going to attempt to turn this blacklisted Android device that I recently picked up on eBay into a desktop slash console slash emulation machine. Now this is a Galaxy S10 and it's blacklisted from the AT&T network that it was originally released on. And if you're not familiar with blacklisted phones, basically this cannot be activated on any network in the US. And most of the time these actually go out of country, but recently I've been seeing a lot of blacklisted or bad ESN phones pop up on eBay and my local Craigslist. So I figured I'd go ahead and pick this up. Even though it's blacklisted, it'll still work as a Wi-Fi device. And I was able to pick this up for $130. It's still a bit expensive uh, for what it is, but it does have that snap Dragon 855 because after all this is the Samsung Galaxy S10 and the main reason I wanted to pick this up was because it does support display over USB type C and it has Samsung DeX built in we'll take a look at that in a second now in order to get this connected to a bigger screen be it a monitor or a television you can go wireless and just cast it but then you're going to run into some latency so I do prefer using USB type C to HDMI and I picked up this cheap dock on Amazon USB type C two USB 2.0 ports Round back here, we have full-size HDMI, USB Type-C, some SD card slots over here, and a single USB 3.0 port. It acts as a stand, so it'll sit right next to my monitor on the desk, and I have plenty of I.O. on this little dock here. Now, another thing to note, at least on these Samsung blacklisted phones that come from AT&T, unfortunately, you can't get over-the-air updates anymore because the phone's blacklisted. It just won't hit up their server and download that update. But you can manually update this using a PC and an application called Odin, and that's exactly what I've done here. So I have Android 11 with One UI 3.0 installed. The S10 was released in 2019, and it's still rocking some pretty decent specs for the CPU. We have the Snapdragon 855, the GPU is the Arduino 640, 8GB of LPDDR4X RAM, 128GB of internal storage, plus we have a micro SD card slot with this one, and it's running Android 11 with Samsung DeX. So here's the setup. Got a 27-inch monitor. I have the little HDMI adapter here that my phone's going to plug directly into. I also have power going in so we can charge the phone up while it's going. I have a wireless keyboard and a mouse connected because I really do hate trackpads. This is the Logitech K400. Great little keyboard if you like trackpads, but personally, I hate them. Super easy to get connected. Uh, sometimes you may have to go into the settings on your Galaxy phone and enable DeX, but most of the time it's already ready to go. Mine's set up, so as soon as it detects HDMI or an external display, DEX will pop up on that external display. And if you haven't heard of DEX before, as you can see, it's definitely more of a desktop style operating system. It really goes great with a mouse and keyboard. We can uh, set up the floating windows. We can have multiple apps opened up. And one thing I get a lot of questions about is performance loss when using DEX. I haven't noticed any performance loss at all on all of the devices I've used DEX on. So if your phone's powered by a Snapdragon 855, it's going to perform just like a Snapdragon 855 would. So when setting up DEX for the first time, there are a few settings I like to change. I go down here to the little icon, DEX Labs, and from here, force apps to resize. We want to make sure this is on, so apps that aren't resizable will resize if we need them to. Next up, make sure we're at 1080p. You can go to 1600 by 900 if you want to. And finally, change the audio output. This monitor does have speakers built in, and I want the sound to come out of there. So uh, with this, just make sure it's enabled. And as you can hear, we do have audio coming out of the monitor speakers. Otherwise, it'll be coming out of the phone speakers. When it comes to using DeX as an everyday computer, you could definitely get by doing this. So uh, with something like this, if you want to do some video playback from your favorite apps, it's going to work out. Some web browsing, like photo editing, document editing, email checking. Everything we really need to be online is here with DeX. But keep in mind, you're going to be using Android apps here. It's not going to work with Windows apps or Linux apps. It has to come from Google Play or you can sideload it. But I mean, if all you do online is watch YouTube, Netflix, browse the web and check your email, something like this could work as an everyday desktop. When it comes to gaming, I personally like to use a controller. So I use an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. Let's go ahead and check out some gaming. We're going to go with SpongeBob Bikini Bottom. This was recently ported to Android, and it actually works really well in the Snapdragon 855. And the reason we enabled Force Apps to resize is so we can go full screen with these games. This game natively supports controller, so it will work with your Bluetooth controller. I'm set to 60 FPS, high settings, and we're getting great performance here. This is a fully playable game. Even though the 855 was released in 2019, it can still keep up pretty well. 
Next up, we have Call of Duty Mobile, high settings, maximum frame rate, and this also supports controllers, but I'm not a big fan of playing this with a controller. I really need to get in there and adjust my sensitivity because it is a bit hard to aim. I'm just so used to playing this with a touch screen. And before we move over to emulation, I wanted to test one other game, and that's going to be Genshin Impact. This game, right now, as making this video, doesn't have official controller support, but you can use an application from Google Play to allow you to map controllers. I'm using the Shax S5B because they do have an application, it's just kind of a one click to get this working. But if you need to use your Xbox controller, there are applications that you can download. While playing Genshin Impact, some of you may have noticed that I had something attached to the back of this phone. This is something I've been experimenting with. This is a powered Peltier cooler. And what this does is attached to the back of your phone. Powered up by USB Type-C, they're actually pretty cheap. It has a fan and a heatsink, and basically the way a Peltier cooler works is one side gets really hot, one side gets really cold. So my desk here is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. But the cooler itself drops down to around 62, but I just turned it on. It does get much colder, around 58 to 56. But as you can see, it is much colder than ambient, or at least room temperature. We're down to 56, and this does help out with performance in the long run on these devices. It'll give you that sustained performance. Instead of the phone getting really hot and thermal throttling that CPU, this thing will keep it nice and chilly. But uh, it's just something I've been experimenting with. And yeah, it does help out with extended play times. Now let's go ahead and move over to some emulation. The performance of the Snapdragon 855 is very well documented online. There's tons of YouTube videos, but this does a really good job with Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, PSP, GameCube, and even Wii. When it comes to GameCube and Wii, there are a few games that will struggle with the Snapdragon 855, but there's still a lot of stuff that's fully playable. First up, we have Dreamcast using ReDream, upscaled to 1920 by 1440, and uh, overall, one of the harder ones to run, in my experience, with the ReDream emulator is Dead or Alive 2. We're at full speed. Next on the list, we have some PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. And just to give you a look here, before everything goes full screen, I mean, these are windowed, and you can have multiple emulators open at the same time. So here we are with Chains of Olympus, Vulcan back in, 2x resolution, it runs great on the Snapdragon 855. And the final thing I wanted to test here was a little bit of GameCube and Wii emulation, using the standalone version of the Dolphin emulator, Vulcan back in, native resolution, I've been getting really good performance with this. And just because I'm here, I figured I'd go ahead and throw a Wii game in. Still using that Dolphin emulator, native resolution, Vulcan back in. Sonic Colors is one of those games that runs at 30, and it runs fine on this device. So overall, it's really easy to set something like this up, and it does work out for native Android gaming, web browsing, YouTube video playback, Netflix, and even emulation, as you saw. Now, I wouldn't pay full price for an S10 just to do this, but if you can find a blacklisted one or one with a bad ESN, I do think this is a pretty cool little project. And I know there's people out there that would just rather have like an NVIDIA Shield, but keep in mind, the Snapdragon 855 is more powerful than the Shield on the CPU and GPU side of things. Plus, we have access to Samsung DeX on a device like this, and connecting it to a big screen really makes a difference when you have kind of a desktop-style operating system. In my opinion, it's just much easier to navigate, but uh, we can also just mirror the screen and alleviate Samsung DeX altogether, if that's what you're into. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I do think this turned out pretty nice. If you're interested in picking something like this up or the accessories I have, I will leave a few links in the description. If there's anything else you want to see running on this system, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.